Right. An embarrassed government unveils distribution of 200 computers to MDA's government appointees. Governor's wife, Mrs. Soludo, expresses satisfaction with the dead decline in malaria cases in Anambra. President Buhari swears in six new permanent secretaries. From the foreign scenes in Sudan, ex-regime officials escape jail amid fighting. Before the news in detail, here's a special message. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Nambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. It has given maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to the evening news. My name is Uche Chuku Ebonam. In line with the Governor Ch Ch Soludo led administration's mantra of everything technology and technology everywhere, distribution 200 com computers has been flagged off in Anambra state. The first phase of the distribution across ministries, departments and agencies, as well as government appointees, will gradually introduce the use of emails and other tools and software in the day-to-day -day running of government activities. Our government house correspondent, Valentine Mbadoa, filed the report taken from here. The 200 computers equipped with modern digital tools, which cost over 100 million naira, are Core i3 and Core i5 computers, which will soon be backed with high-speed internet facilities. Speaking on behalf of the governor, secretary to the state government, Professor Solochuku Lovelo, recalled that the policy began about three years ago when the former administration set up an ICT agency. The SSG stated that across the world, people interact easily with the use of technology, describing it as the speed of change in the world and called on civil servants to embrace technology as it is very liberating. He asked the agency to continue the next stage of training for civil servants on technology and commence digitization of documents to make the work easier. This will help efficiency, but it is also very liberating, like I said. Once you embrace technology, you'll be very happy. So we thank Mr. Governor for keeping faith with what he promised in his manifesto. Uh, technology everywhere and everything technology. The head of service, Vice Teodora Igwebe, revealed that it is one of the pillars of digitization of the service, saying that, among other things, will introduce a shift from paper service to digital service for enhanced productivity and efficiency. Vice Igwebe further pointed out that the commencement of the distribution is a bold step by the governor. By using digital tools and technologies, we can streamline our processes, increase efficiency, and improve the quality of our services. Earlier, the managing director of the ICT agency, Mr. Fred Abata, noted that it is a milestone for the Anambra State Government under the supervision of Governor Saludo, for which the ICT agency is related to be at the forefront. He said that they conducted a baseline survey of the situation across MDAs and discovered a civil service that has a total of 306 computers, which is not ideal as government across the world now rely on technology. These computers are designed to help empower us to do our work better. So we urge you to make the most of these tools and help build our state. Uh, the vision of Mr. Governor is a livable and prosperous smart mega city. Commissioners, special advisors, other members of the State Executive Council, civil servants, among others, attended the event which was held at the Government House Orca. Symbolic presentation of the gadget formed the high point of the event. From the Government House Orca, Valentine Barra reporting, Fabius News. Anambra State House of Assembly has confirmed the appointment of Mr. Christian Odechuku as a Commissioner for Industry by Governor Chuku Masoludo. The House confirmed his appointment during yesterday's plenary after consideration of the report of his committee on screening and election matters on Mr. Odechuku presented by the Chairman of the Committee, Dr. Pascal Abodike. House of Assembly correspondent Chukwe Meka more than him now reports. According to the chairman of the committee, Dr. Abodike, who is also the deputy speaker of the house, they have screened Mr. Odechuku and found him suitably qualified to serve Anambra State as the commissioner for industry. The answers proffered by the nominee were cogent and satisfactory. The committee also adjudged the nominee suitably qualified to serve as the commissioner of industry in the state. 
Thereafter, Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Ute Okafo, the member representing Njiko Katu constituency, Dr. Pete Ibida, and his another one counterpart, Honorable Ebele Ejofo, provided Mr. Udechuku with an insight on the expectations of the House from him as Commissioner for Industry. Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Okafo, read out the resolution of the House while the lawmakers supported it through voice vote. Those in support that the reports of the House Committee on Election Matters and Screening be made a working tool of this honorable house. Say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Earlier, while answering questions from the House, Mr. Udechuku explained that he will work with Governor Soludo to deliver his industrialization agenda for Anambra State by strengthening 161 industries in the state with a variety of policies and encourage new industries to grow locally. Mr. Udechuku further said that he will use his wealth of experience to attract global enterprises in the world to Anambra State and partner with Anambra Entrepreneur to grow the economy with a view to deliver a smart mega city for Anambra where people around the world, including India Anambra, would take pride to live, work and invest. Thank the Executive Governor of Anambra State, uh, Professor Chukuma Charles Saludo, for the opportunity to serve and support his administration and I thank him for the trust and confidence. And uh, I hope and uh, I look forward to working very closely with him and the National Assembly and the Saludo Solutions team. Uh, to deliver on uh, the industrialization agenda for an state. In their contributions, the member representing Newi North constituency, Honorable Nonso Smart Okafo, and the member for Njiko Kawon constituency, Dr. Timothy Ifedi Orama, urged Governor Soludo to merge Ministry of Trade and Commerce with the Ministry of Industry so that Mr. Odechuku will have a big platform to achieve his economic vision for the state. From the State House of Assembly, Chukwe Mecca, Mordelim, ABS News. Anambra governor's wife, Mrs. Nonye Soludo, has disclosed that the state government has already kicked off plans to be herb among the first states in Nigeria to receive the new malaria vaccine. Mrs. Soludo, who said this in a statement released in Orca to mark the 2023 World Malaria Day, noted that taking delivery of the vaccine, which has been consented for use in the country, will bring to an end to the era of one of the commonest household sicknesses in the state. She explained that since the distribution of over 3.8 million insecticide treated nets in 2022, the malaria rate has been significantly reduced in under five children in Anambra State from 77.8%, which is stood in February 2022, to 14.3% in February 2023. The governor's wife, who is also the Anambra Net Ambassador, noted that insecticide treated nets to use in the state have already increased from 27% in 2022 to 57% this year, accounting for the marginal decline in reported malaria cases across medical facilities in a number of states under one year. While asking households, especially those housing children and pregnant women, to continue to sleep under mosquito nets, Mrs. Saluda maintained that her husband's administration taking prime notice of the contributions of malaria to infant and maternal deaths is working committedly to reduce malaria cases to the barest minimum. She also appealed to residents of the state to ensure that the environments are constantly kept clean, while certain human habits that enable the breeding of mosquitoes must be avoided. World Malaria Day is marked in April 25th of every year, with the World Health Organization, WHO, pinning this year's celebration on the theme time to deliver zero malaria, invest, innovate, implement. Still on the World Malaria Day, an embracing government has joined its counterparts worldwide to commemorate this year's World Malaria Day, briefing the media to mark the day. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Afa Mubdike, said that malaria is a preventable and treatable disease that continues to have a devastating impact on the health and livelihood of people around the world. Our health correspondent has the details.
The health commissioner said that the day is internationally recognized, highlighting the global efforts to control malaria and celebrating the gains that have been made. According to him, since the year 2000, the world has made historic progress against malaria, saving millions of lives and regretted that millions of people worldwide are still at risk of malaria, especially children. Dr. Obidike revealed that the World Malaria Report 2021 showed that the African region continues to shoulder the heaviest malaria burden, accounting to an estimated 234 million cases of malaria and 96% of malaria deaths in 2021. He said that within Africa, Nigeria contributes significantly to the global malaria cases and deaths, with the highest rates of 27 and 31%, respectively. Dr. Obidike noted that the day is used to draw attention to the devastating impact of the disease on families, communities, and societies, as well as provide the opportunity for the participation of all Nigerians, governments, development partners, multinational organizations, local organizations, and individuals in raising awareness on malaria and the danger it portends. He revealed that this year's team, which is Time to Deliver Zero Malaria, Invest, Innovate, and Implement, Act Now, reinforces how investments in ending malaria, save lives, and are a pathway to improving economic growth and preparing for future health threats to achieve a safer world. The health commission explained that last year the Anambra state government flagged off the distribution of over 3.8 million insecticide treated nets to households in Anambra with the first lady Mrs. Noye Saludo as the net ambassador for the state. He urged the Anambra to maintain a clean environment devoid of stagnant water. They silt their gutters, cut grasses, and sleep inside their nets to achieve a malaria-free Anambra. If we're able to implement all those things we, we do now, and the slogan is obviously to act now. This year's team reinforces how investment in ending malaria saves lives and uh, a pathway to improving economic growth and preparing for uh, future health threats to achieve a safer world. Earlier, the State Director of Public Health in the Ministry, Dr. Afam Aneme, who eulogized the successes recorded in the fight against malaria in the state, called for all hands to be on deck in the fight against the disease. In Oka, this is Chibu Zokoye for ABS News. Candidates of the ongoing 2023 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, in centers across Anambra State have been asked to abide by the rules guiding the examination. The Anambra State JAM coordinator, Mrs. Karen Gar, gave the directive at the JAM office in Amorbia, Okasal's local government area, while speaking to ABS on the ongoing JAM examination in center. Correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo tells us more which is being written in badges kicked off yesterday and will end on friday the 28th of april 2023 when abs visited some of the jam centers within orca including the idk learning center st john of god girls secondary school and Graffield center it was observed that the examination was going on smoothly except for a few candidates who missed their own exam time the Anambra State Jam Boss, Mrs. Gar, who restated the commitment of the board towards ensuring a heat-free exercise across the 29 centers in Anambra State, cautioned the candidates against examination malpractice or any irregularities that contradict the rules guiding the exam, saying that they employed the services of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps and as well informed the Nigeria Police Force on the exam to ensure orderliness and security environment for the exercise saying that the Anambra State Jam Board is working hand in glove with the state's Ministry of Education, Mrs. Gar revealed that the board, before the commencement of the examination, made sure that centers in the state, as well as computer cells and network, are in good condition and will perfectly serve the candidates. Speaking, the State Commissioner for Education, Professor Ngozi Chomu, then commended the State Jam Board for efforts put into place to serve Anambra Jam Bites perfectly throughout the exam, explaining that she visited all the jam centers in the state to check the condition of computers as well as the speed of the network in centers, confirming that the centers are in good condition for the exercise, even as she disclosed that officials of the state's education ministry are also monitoring jam examination across the centers. Professor Cho 
Tomu then while pointing out that the state is known for excellence owing to the efforts of the present administration of Professor Chukwu Masulu during the sector warned this year's JAMP candidates and other students in the state against examination malpractice and act she said destroys one's destiny and academic future. For JAMP, we will make sure that there are no malpractices. We have put machineries into motion to make sure that it's good cell and that there is no malpractices in the examination. In separate interviews, some of the Jambites, including Masters Johnson Nicholas, Emmanuel Ifeme, Donald Udechuku, among others, rated the services of Jamb high but recommended that Jamb should improve time wise to minimize the sufferings of the candidates, as according to them, they were supposed to write their exam by 12 noon but had to wait till 1 pm. In Oka, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo reporting for ABS News. Still to come in the news tonight, President Buhari swears in six new permanent secretaries. Ex-regime officials escape jail amid fighting in Sudan. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total to the round maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. The news returns after the break. Breakfast. Get smart for a great day. How do I know? Because my daddy goes to his work feeling good and always with a smile. Mommy is always filled with confidence. My sister is always in tune. And for me, learning new things becomes absolute fun. That's because all day and every day, the peak goes on. Start your day with a big protein breakfast pea. Welcome back to the rest of the news from the four, uh, federal scenes. The present Major General Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday swore in six new permanent secretaries in the Federal Civil Service at the Council Chambers of the ha State House of Abuja. The swearing in took place shortly before the commencement of this week's Federal Executive Council meeting. The appointees and their states of origin are Mahmoud Kambari, Borno State, Esubana Nko Asaya, Cross River, Lawo, uh, Lamowa Ibrahim Gumbe, Yakubu Kafar Mata Kanu, Olorin Tola Michael Ogun, and Richard Felangwa Taraba State. While reading the citation of the new officers, special advisor to the president of media publicity, Femi Additional, said the event marked the culmination of a weeks long pre qualification exercise for directors by the office of the head of civil service of the federation. The Transition Committee Chairman of Arumba South Local Government Area, Prince Navel Uchendo, has called on Indian and Brow to participate actively in the upcoming national population census nationwide. Prince Navel made this known while playing host to executive members of the Nigerian Union of Journalists and Ambrose Council in his office as Council Secretariat Umunze. Correspondent Ngozi Ubleri covered the event in our reports. Review pointed out that it is very important that everyone takes full part in the national population exercise so that the problems associated with 2006 census do not arise. He said that he has sensitized his council members on the need for active participation, urging other council areas to embark on such sensitization exercise. Prince Neville applauded Governor Soludo's strong policy in security of lives and property of the state citizenry, especially how he tackled their security-prone area, saying that peace and stability has returned in their locality. The Orumba South Council boards appreciated journalists in Anambra for doing a good job in information dissemination and prompt reportage of government programs and activities all geared towards growth and development of the state. I want every Anambria to take this census very, very serious. I'm proud that I have sensitivity both in, even to the world level in Orumba South. We are prepared for this census coming. Earlier, the state chairman of NUJ, Dr. Odogu Emeka Odogu, said that the visit was to familiarize themselves with the Orumba South Council boards and to see ways they can partner with the council area in some of its programs. Dr. Odogu, represented by the vice chairman of the council, Comrade Ngozi Obileri, appreciated Prince Neville for grading roads in 18 wards in the council area during Christmas, in line with the vision of Governor Soludo to give access to Indianambra coming home for the unit tide and for renovating some buildings in the council headquarters for the good of the workers, urging him not to relent. We also want to tell you that we hear your scores. Like, uh, 
last year, we had you graded roads in 18 wards in Kolumbasa. And we are happy about that. We want to tell you to continue. From the Orumba South Council Headquarters, Umunze, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. Prime suspect Ahmed Haroun has confirmed that he and other members of the former government removed in 2019 have escaped from prison recently, raising new fears for a fragile ceasefire. For all citizens, the soaring cost of food and a great number of hospitals bummed out of service are worse than the humanitarian crisis upholding, unfolding in Sudan. A U.S. broker's ceasefire between Sudan's war and generals enters its second day but remains fragile as witnesses report continuing air raids and the rapid support forces says it has seized an oil refinery and a power plant. A ship with 1,687 civilians from more than 50 countries fleeing Sudan has arrived in Saudi Arabia, according to its Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The operation is the largest rescue effort by the kingdom to date. The highly anticipated Federation Cup round of 64 encounter between Rivers United and Aimba has been postponed. The match was earlier scheduled to take place at the Godzilla Babu International Stadium on Thursday. The postponement was at the instance of Rivers United, who will be facing young Africans of Tanzania in the second leg of the Confederation Cup quarterfinal tie on Sunday. The Nigeria Football Federation is now expected to fix a new date for the game between Rivers United and Enimba. Before we go tonight, remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS TV from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Oka. Go on to subscribe to our YouTube channel at ABS Television Oka. You can also follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now the main point that media news again. An embarrassed government has unveiled the distribution of 200 computers to MDA's government appointees. Governor's wife, Mrs. Soludo, has expressed satisfaction with the decline in malaria cases in Nanambra. President Buhari has sworn in six new permanent secretaries. And finally, we told you in Sudan, ex regime officials have escaped jail amid fighting. Governor Chuma Soludo has come for a total around maintenance of the Nambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values and has given maximum support for the task ahead. That's all on the news tonight. My name is Uchechuku Ebonam. Good night. <laughs>